Hello, I'm Dr. Rick Durst. I teach theology for Golden Gate Baptist Theological Seminary. And this little conversation is about gauging the depth of sin. Now, certainly the New Testament teaches that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But truthfully, some people come far shorter than others. Uh, when Jesus said to uh, the father whose son was uh, demonized and had epilepsy, how long had he had this? That's sort of a diagnostic question, gauging the size of sin. And of course, where sin abound, grace abounds all the more. But we need to know how much sin has abounded in a person's life if we're going to help them get free. There are two vectors engaging the depths of sin, theologically speaking. The first is culpability. That's measuring the size of the guilt along this continuum from ignorance to premeditation. Uh, was this a sin, a transgression that they hadn't been thinking about and uh, just committed it out of ignorance? I didn't know that was a sin. Or is it something they knew was sin, but premeditated intentionality? And if you think along the, the ideas of crimes, uh, jury, uh, the district attorney is trying to establish the level of culpability based on premeditation. The other vector has to do with duration. How long have you been doing this? How long has he had this? Jesus asked the father of the demonized boy. And there are four levels of duration with reference to sin. The greater the duration, the greater the depth of sin, uh, the more the experience of grace in order to bring about transformation. Uh, is it accidental? It's the very first time they've done this particular sin. Is it occasional? It's something they've done more than once, but it hasn't reached the level of a habit. At the level of a habit, you are making provisions for sin. And most of the time that we do sin, we've made provision for it. We've planned it, perhaps even scheduled it. And the habit takes over a person's life. Uh, finally, there's a fourth level that the scripture speaks of generational. This is the sins of the fathers that's passed on to the children and the grandchildren. Uh, we know from the studies of sociologists that uh, alcoholism can be passed on, child abuse can be passed on, certainly racism can be passed on at the generational level. Now, with these two vectors in mind, let's plot the size of sin. Uh, if it is accidental, and done out of ignorance. Uh, let's use lust for an example. So a lustful thought or a lustful action. Uh, this, this is sin, but it's not large. Certainly not as large as something that is occasional and with some premeditation as in the case of licentiousness. Uh, so. so someone may be dabbling in uh, online pornography uh, it doesn't disrupt their, their schedules, their work uh, too much, but they dabble in it. Uh, but it could grow all the way to becoming a habit. And you know it's a habit when everything in your life begins to revolve around it and feed it. And that leads to concupiscence. Uh, which means that now you're living for the habit rather than uh, living for uh, God's purposes in your life. And at some point, that can be some, become so destructive, the Bible uses the word reprobate. And this is the person whose pattern of life is so grieving and quenching the Holy Spirit uh, that their capacity for repentance uh, is, is greatly diminished. Uh, so this is a way of looking at the size of sin. And you know, we who are in the gospel of Jesus Christ uh, we are not intimidated by any level of sin. But in order for us to bring ministry to people at these levels of sin in their lives, uh, we must bring resources and time commitment and prayer. Uh, do you remember when Jesus said to the disciples who'd, who'd failed to cast out the demon in that epileptic boy, he said, this kind only comes out with much prayer. Uh, suggesting that um, the presence of sin and the demonic in a person's life can have different sizes, and the church's response to them has to be similar. Hope that makes sense to you. Thanks so much for watching.